<laughs> What's up everybody? We're back with another weekend wash edition and today we're going to be detailing this Kia Optimum actually in Minnesota with my family. This is my sister's car and it's got some scratches and it needs some love so we're going to polish it out put a ceramic coating on it. We're gonna be testing out some new products too. This series was created to test uh, new products out on my car, friends' cars and stuff, so super excited. We got some great products for you guys today to try out. If you have some products that you want us to try in the weekend wash series, go ahead and send them to us. I'll put some information in the description below that you can send us your products, but otherwise, let's get it rolling. It just snowed here the other day and with all the salt on the road, this thing is looking nasty. Now we were gonna take this to, when I say we, I mean me and Casey. Everybody meet my future brother-in-law. He's gonna be helping me out here on the Kia. So we were thinking about taking this to a car wash, but luckily I brought some rinseless wash. Now this is a product, if you guys have used o and it's very similar, but this is made by a different company, Atomic Supply Company. So we're gonna try this out since uh, we're all about testing new products here. You ever heard of a rinseless or a waterless wash? Touchless only in a car wash. Yeah, so this is a rinseless wash. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna fill up a bucket here with water, put our solution in there, wash the car like normal, but we won't rinse it. We just go right to the drying part of the car wash, so. The first step of the detail is to wash the vehicle. If you live in a region like the north where it's impossible to wash your car the traditional way with a hose and pressure washer, a rinseless wash like the one we're using here by Atomic Supply Company is a great alternative. A product like this has a lot of lubrication properties to prevent swirls and scratches. While Casey does the washing, I will follow him and I'll dry the vehicle. I'm actually testing out some new Reg Company towels here. I'll be testing the Everest 550 Ultra Plush Towel and the Double Twistress, which is a twisted loop towel, and the Dry Me a River Towel. When you're doing a rinseless wash like this, work in small sections and make sure you use lots of towels, especially if you're working on a car that is this dirty. Out of all three of the towels that I was using, the Twisted Loop towel was probably my favorite. It picked up water really easy and it didn't leave any streaks behind. The Everest 550 was definitely the softest of all the towels, but all the towels did the job very nicely. I'm gonna leave some links in the description below so you guys can find all the products that we use in this video. All right, wash is done. Waterless wash, how did you feel about the waterless or the rinseless wash there? It was nice and easy. Uh, we're going to do a quick inspection of the paint here. Check out uh, all the swirls and scratches. There's some etching. That clay bar just takes off contaminants, right? Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff that's going to be stuck to the paint. Yeah. So rub your hand, like just rub your hand on the top of this hood. Can you feel any roughness yeah. to it? That's bugs, road tar, contaminants, you know, brake dust, road debris, just stuff that's been stuck to the paint and doesn't come off from normal washing. So we're gonna use a clay bar and we'll remove all that. But first, just check out this scratch. Yeah, we've known about that one. So when, when it comes to scratches, if, uh, if you run your fingernail over it, and what happens if you run your fingernail over it and the fingernail catches, it's usually through the clear coat and through the painted surfaces. You can actually see the white in this one, so it's yeah. all the way down to the primer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna polish that out. We're gonna make it look a little better, but I don't know if we're gonna make that disappear or not. You know, you got a couple of big ones. There's another one right there. But a lot of these, so you see all the swirl marks. So we're gonna do a polishing process and we're gonna take out all those swirl, mar swirl marks, swirl, swirl marks. Uh, we're gonna take out all the swirl marks and, and it'll give it a lot more depth and a more shine to it once it's out in the sun. Because what happens, as soon as that ref light reflects off those scratches there, you can see it reflecting all in different ways. As soon as we polish that flat down, 
it's gonna give it a lot more depth because of the reflections coming straight back at you and not refracting off of those swirls and scratches. Okay, so now we gotta clay the car. This is gonna take all the contaminants off, uh, all the surface that you felt down there, and then we're gonna hit the rocker panels too. That's where most of the stuff is gonna be. There's some tar on the other side. I got some tar remover we'll use on that. But So you can either use a spray like this, which is another waterless wash. We'll spray it on there and we'll use it as a lubricant because you always okay. want a lubricant when you're using clay bar like that. So that's your piece there. I'll show you how it works. You can just spray a light spray. And then uh, for the clay bar, you just glide it along the paint here. You're not gonna press too hard, but you'll kind of feel all that stuff come up off into the clay bar. And go both there. directions? You don't have to go both directions. I mean, you can if you want to, it's not gonna hurt it, but you wanna make sure you're covering all. I'm just going over it a couple times if I still feel roughness. Okay. You know, if I feel roughness, I'm just gonna go over it until I stop feeling that roughness. I'm not gonna hammer down on it, but you can see all that. That's all the stuff that's still sitting on that surface. So I'll have you use this spray. Okay. And then I'm actually gonna just use this mitt here. I'll do the other side. So how do you, how does she normally wash this car? Uh, car wash. Car wash. Yeah, usually we try and go to my parents and use a pressure washer. Yeah. But that doesn't always work out. Well, especially in the winter. I mean, we don't, nobody has their water on right now. Yeah, you know, it's not ideal. Uh, we're going to polish it up and make it look a little better, but we're not going for perfect here. Yeah. And then we'll put a protectant on it, which is, which is nice because it'll make it easier to wash. It'll stay cleaner for longer. It'll add some gloss to it, so it'll look nice, but... Yeah, if, you, if you're gonna take it through a car wash, just, you know, you're gonna get smaller scratches and swirls, but. Yeah. It's hard up here, you know, when it's cold and you can't wash your car yourself in the, the driveway. Yep, right in the middle of winter. And then hand washes can get expensive too. But if you come over here, you can use the waterless wash. Yeah. And then every once in a while, like after a panel, especially maybe after the bottoms, just take this and like stretch it out and fold it on itself again. Okay, yeah, because I can see then, it's yeah. getting more dirty. Yeah, it'll show the camera that. <clears throat> dirty. Dirtiness. And then just squeeze it back out, roll it in a ball, and then just make it into another pancake. Okay. That'll clean it. We're using AM clay to remove all the contaminants off the paint. I really like this clay bar. The more I use it, the more I fall in love with it. You're gonna be able to find most of these products that we're using today on Car Guy Supplies. Some of them you will not, but as a thank you for watching this video, I'm gonna give you guys a secret discount code. I'm not gonna publish this anywhere else. And I'll keep the code available for the next couple months for you guys to use, if you choose to. So at checkout, you're gonna use the code MINNESOTA and you're gonna receive 20% off of most items that we have on the site. After we get done with the clay bar section, I take the leftover rinseless solution and I wipe down the rims and tires and then I dry them off. All right, Casey, the next step is to actually tape up all the rubber pieces. So we're gonna just polish this out a little bit. You've seen the paint. We're not gonna make it perfect. We're just gonna give it a little more depth to shine, take those little scratches and swirls. We'll actually work on this one a little bit, see how far we can get that one out. But first, we have to tape up all these rubber trim pieces because we're gonna be using the buffer and we don't wanna get any wax or polish on those pieces. And that gives us a chance to try out this new tape. So normally we use, this is a 3M yellow masking tape. 3M just came out with this new tape and this is a vinyl tape. So the problem with that tape most of the time is if you tape this, sometimes that adhesive can come up uh -huh. and then you're buffing on that and then you get this adhesive track because it sticks to the to the pad and then you'll see it yeah. transfer onto the paint. So this is supposed to eliminate that. It's a vinyl tape and it 
cuts off real nice too. Wow. Straight. Straight. I'm just gotta see if it sticks well. And you're supposed to be able to buff over this paint and not have to worry about any ad adhesive transfer. So we'll tape up all these rubber pieces. For the paint correction, we're gonna be using a Porter Cable and a Harbor Freight Machine. These are both dual action machines. The Porter Cable Machine you can pick up for like 125 bucks, and the Harbor Freight Machine is like 50 or $60. These are great machines if you're just starting off with paint correction or if you're on a budget. On the Porter Cable Machine, I'm gonna test out the Meguiar Soft Buff five inch backing plate. All right, Casey, have you ever polished before? Not a car, polished a floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the same thing. All right. All right, we're gonna test this pad. This is a foam pad, so there's different types of pads. You have foam pads and you have microfiber pads and you have wool pads. This is a Meguiar's soft buff foam cutting disc. So we're gonna be cutting first. We're gonna be doing two different steps. We're gonna cut the paint, take out all the bigger defects and try to get some of these bigger swirls and scratches out, and then we're gonna follow it with a polishing step. So after we use this cutting step, we're gonna have like micro marring and hazing okay. that you wanna polish up, and then that'll clean up that second step. We'll clean all that up. So we're gonna try this one first. I'll show you how the buffer works. After a quick polishing training session with Casey, he's off and running. We're gonna be testing the Shine Supply products today. I've heard great things about their products, but I've never had a chance to use them. So today is that day. We're gonna start a test spot with the soft buff foam cutting pad that Meguiar's makes and the classic cut. I usually like to cut with a microfiber or a wool pad, but in certain cases, like if we're dealing with a soft paint, sometimes all you need is a foam pad. So all we're doing here is trying to figure out what is the best combination of products and pads to get the best results and the amount of time that we set aside for the detail. The best combination for this vehicle ended up being a microfiber pad and the Classic Cut. The Classic Cut compound is made for a dual action machine like the ones that we're using here and it has almost no dusting with the product either which is really nice. So the plan here is to let Casey do all the cutting and then I'm gonna follow behind him and I'll do all the final polishing, but he has some work to do, so I'm gonna let him get a good head start on it while I test another product out. All right, this next product that we're testing out is a fellow detailer who brought this to me, uh, Joshua Felder. This is supposed to be a one product compounding and polishing system. So normally we use a compound and then a polish, two steps. What this is supposed to do is you're gonna use the same product with your cutting pad and use the same product with your polishing pad. Um, and you're supposed to, now I think you're supposed to get the same results. I had to start that over again. <laughs> you guys are making me nervous. <laughs> So we're actually gonna do the first process with the product and then we'll use the wool pad and then we'll come back and we'll use the second step with the Lake Country foam pad. We'll see how it does. Woo. Put too much on. You want me to hold that leg for you? No, that's good. Well, a little bit goes a long way. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I see. The product that I'm using here is called Platinum. It's a one-step hybrid polish blend. It's actually a diminishing abrasive, which means when you first start working with the product, the abrasives in the product are gonna be pretty aggressive, like a heavy cut compound. 
and as you continue to work the product, the abrasives will diminish and become less aggressive, eventually turning into a polish. This is what the paint looks like after one compounding session. You can see there are some deep scratches still in the paint. The cut is very comparable to any compound that I've used in the past. If I wanted to get these deep scratches out, I could just by doing multiple cutting sessions. We're not going for perfect here, and you can see that it did clear up most of the minor swirling. So let's see what it looks like after I use the foam polishing pad. Some products that we use could have fillers or glazes to mask some of the swirls after the polishing session. So I wiped the panel down with Optimum's panel prep. And I'm pretty impressed with the results after we got with just doing one cutting session and one polishing session. This is a product that I definitely want to do some more testing on. Remember that giant scratch on the back door? So I'm gonna let this footage run in real time so you guys can see how much time, speed, and how slow I move the machine to remove this scratch. checking the panel to make sure that I'm not building up too much heat. Is there a blue rag up there? Okay, that's one time. I'm gonna hit it one more time. It's still like an incredible improvement. Yeah, it's, it looks better. Like this is, you can kind of see that one's kind of going away. And then it's deeper over here. But, you know, the farther we go down, the more clear cut we're taking off. And there's only to leave this haze on. Yeah. We'll just do it one more time. That's the, right that's, that's the end. That's the deepest part of it. Huh. Oh. Looks better. Now that Casey has a good start with compounding the vehicle, I'm going to follow behind him with the Shine Supply Classic Polish. Both the Classic Compound and the Classic Polish, they both worked really great. I didn't have any issues with either of them. Left in the pool of my own mess.
The Kia was taking a little longer than both me and Casey expected, so we recruited some of the family to come help us. This is a scratch remover by a company called Phoenix, so Jaden is going to use this to remove all the scratches behind the door handles. All right, so what I want you to do is you see all these scratches in here? Yeah. And in here, we're going to polish them out by hand. So this is a scratch remover. You just put a little bit on your finger here. And this takes a little bit of working and your finger might hurt after it, but you're gonna put your finger in there. You're gonna push, and you're just gonna go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Until it's gone? Yeah. You wanna do it probably like five or six times, you know, just like that. Put a little more on. And then you can go inside there. And then you can pick a new spot with your finger and then put a little more on and then rub it again. Just the same thing, just like that. Get your finger way up there, try to get right up in here. And your finger will probably hurt a little bit afterwards, but so there's that and there's that. Not being able to wash the car with a hose or a pressure washer usually means that I'll just skip the door jams, but these ones needed some serious help. So I'm gonna use a brush from Work Stuff and PNS Wheel Cleaner to get the heavy stuff off, and then I'm gonna rinse it out with our leftover waterless wash bucket. Then the last step is to shine it up a bit and add a bit of protection with AM Quick Detailer Plus. All right, she's looking good, man. What do you think? Pretty good. Looks good? Yeah. She's not perfect, but uh, it looks a lot better than she was. Oh, yeah. All right, so here's the plan. We're gonna apply the coating now, but before we apply the coating, we gotta make sure everything is super clean. We're gonna take off all the tape. So I'm gonna have you take off the tape. I'm gonna have you clean all the cracks and the edges. So what can happen, uh, you can have a buildup of polish and compound on all these types of cracks here. Okay. So you'll just take a towel and you'll kind of just use your finger and kind of clean out all these cracks on in all the emblems everything we want to make sure any residue is out of them okay and then i'm going to go around and i'm going to spray um like a panel wipe type product it's an ipa based product and it's going to take off all the polishing oils and residue and after that we'll be ready for the coating cool <laughs> So I'm gonna show you, you're gonna be the actual coater, and then I'm gonna remove the coating after you, but I'll show you the first couple uh, sections here on how to do it and what to look for. Is, this the, is put, this the whole bottle? That's the whole bottle. Okay. We probably won't even use, we'll probably use half that bottle. So, show the camera what we're using. The coating that we're testing here is Nano Pro 9H. It was sent to me to test it out. And this is actually gonna be the second car that I'm testing the product on. The coating is simple enough to use. It's very comparable to the other coatings that I've tried. The product has a very strong odor to it and it can be a bit streaky when we were removing the product. But other than that, it works well. I can't comment on the durability of the product as I just haven't been able to see a car with the coating on it for a long term of time. 
They are looking for US installers and I'm gonna leave a link below in the description if you wanna contact them. We ultimately chose to pass on the product because we already have established ourselves with some companies that we like to work with and have tried and tested products. And after a long, long day, the Kia is finally done. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.